give us the uh, kind of emotional roller coaster you had over the last, you know, hour or so. Um, well, it's a lot, and um, <laughs> I think particularly with having my husband on the same card, like marriage, there's ups and downs. <laughs> and um, tonight was just an example of that. But I am very proud of my husband, and I am proud of my team, and I'm proud of my performance. So, and I'm very honored to be on the Bellator stage tonight. So. Ideally, would you do it again? If you, or, or, oh, hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would do it again. Absolutely. That's a, well, talk about your performance. I mean, obviously, you know, going against a respected opponent, you, you were kind of the underdog coming in. I mean, how did you feel about your, your performance in there? Um, I, I was talking to Taylor. I was like, I don't really remember exactly how we got to the ground. That, my whole goal was to just get to the ground, and I knew once I hit the ground, I was fine. So I'm not exactly sure what takedown I hit. We've worked several throughout the game plan. It might have been just a guard pull, to be honest. Um, but I knew I threw one side kick, and that was kind of the game plan of setting up the takedowns of the kicks. And then um, after that, it was just hunt for the submission. So one right after another, I knew I threw up a couple things. They didn't qu feel quite right. And then that last one, I was like, I'm under the chin. I know this one feels right, so I'm just going to wait it out. Were you surprised at all? I mean, I, I thought she was actually pretty decent on the ground. And, like, you know, she was doing some of the right things, even though you were really keeping the pressure high with the submissions. Did that shock you at all? Did you think you'd be able to get her just instantly on the ground? Well, I think she had some wrestling background. It seemed like from the film that we watched, she had some wrestling IQ. Um, not so much jujitsu submission type, but um, I, I saw that. Um, but again, I have great teammates back home in Knoxville who can simulate that really well, and so that played to my favor. I believe I, I thrive in the scrambles, and so her having that little bit of offensive scramble was perfect for me. So nice. Last thing for me, I mean, you kind of came in as the unknown commodity, but now you, you get the big win. Do, do you get to call your shot now? Like, what, what do you want to do moving forward? Moving forward is the same thing. I'll come back to Knoxville, get right back in the gym. I got other teammates getting ready for fights, so that's priority number one. And then after that, will be whatever Coach Eric says. So. Yeah, I mean, Tennessee has been a really hotbed right now, especially for the women's division. We've seen quite a few people out of, out of your gym and a couple of the gyms in the area. Tell, tell me a little bit about that, how it's been for you gals the past couple months. It seems like you guys are really on a roll right now. Yes, at, at Knoxville Martial Arts Academy, I think we hold like the largest amount of active female MMA athletes. So if you are a promoter looking for some female <laughs> fighters, please hit us up because we have everyone from the 150. 115 division all the way up so um, just to be able to train with another female body is a huge asset because you know women fight different than men and not that to say that we don't go with the guys because I think Nick Gertz one of our pro fighters first time walking in the gym he's like hey we hit girls here I'm like oh okay cool it's a place for me um, so we train with the guys too so you get a very well-rounded look um, particularly at our gym um, do, you, do you hope that maybe Bellator will come out to, to Knoxville at some point and uh, I would part love Tennessee? that um, I hopefully the Knoxville fans will too so um, I would love that yeah how, how was how was her power I know she she did she did catch you on a couple of little punches how was Ava's power uh, to you it was hard and like I said we knew she was a boxer and we knew she had strength in that area so I'm not going to downplay that like my jaw's a little sore but um, like I said, I think she did a great job, um, and I'm very thankful that she got in the cage with me, and, um, you know, I can't do this. It's not a one-man show. You have to have your opponent in there, so I need her just as much as she needs me in there. Emily, oh. some people would say that this is very reminiscent of the Heather Hardy, Christina Williams situation. The boxer came in hyped up, second night out, the more experienced MMA fighter. Did you read into that? Did you look at that fight and well, I guess did actually, that play Heather into you? Well, actually, Hardy fought my teammate, Taylor Turner, who oh, was in my corner tonight. Oh, so we absolutely did read into that fight. And so um, I relied heavily on Coach Taylor, not only for my strength and conditioning and as like a mentor, but she relived some of her experiences with that Heather Hardy fight with me. And that was um, a huge asset to me during this fight camp. So, very thankful. Now, you are, like uh, John said, you are the new one, you know, you're the unknown. Tell us a bit about yourself, because obviously this is your moment, and this is a lot of fans' introduction to you specifically. Just how did you get started in mixed martial arts? How did I get started? Um, well, when I was six years old, I had a lymph node removed from my arm, and I was a little bit of a tomboy, had already gotten kicked out of dance class. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my brother had the aspiration to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and so my parents were like, Either you can do physical therapy or you can do a sport that requires you to move your arm. So they're like, here, go do this with your brother. And at that point, I'd already knocked out like three of his teeth. So they're like, it's a perfect fit. Um, and I was just that weird kid that never really stopped doing martial arts. And then I went 
um, into nursing school and at that point in time that was the first time that I wasn't doing Taekwondo or Judo anymore and I just felt like this void in my life and it was that summer home that I was like I'm gonna go train just for fun at Knoxville Martial Arts Academy. For a long time I was just training just to learn and um, take in the knowledge, not really compete anymore and, and it wasn't until I had been working as a nurse for a couple years that I was like, you should really try this, and did one amateur MMA fight, fell in love, and here we are. <laughs> now, are you still working as a nurse, or is MMA your full-time gig? Well, for or a long time I worked at a hospital. I did uh, orthopedic med surge, so I'm in the step-down critical care unit, so I've done a little bit of everything, and then I took a full year off of nursing, and that was the year that I made my pro debut. So I saved up enough money to like, all right, I'm going to put all my eggs in this basket, burn all the ships, and let's do that. But um, the saying goes in the nursing world, you never retire, you just go <laughs> PRN, and, or as needed, and so that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing um, as needed home health nursing. So this schedule is much more flexible, and I'm doing just enough hours to keep up my license, um, because I do have a passion for nursing care in itself, um, so it's a nice balance. It gives me a counterbalance to MMA. <laughs> so were they watching tonight at home, back home in Knoxville, I at, hope so. at work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you told them, hey, I won't be here, but you can see me on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I did, yes. So a lot of my patients do know that I am a fighter. Well, you know, um, we have Carrie Ann and Melendez. That's that's right now a straw weight. You're a straw weight right now. We got Ava's a straw weight. Currently, Bellator doesn't have a straw weight division. Do you think that you know? Hopefully, that that ends up happening where we could get a straw weight champion. I would love to see more straw weights. I mean, I hope that our performance tonight proved that you know straw weights. We are active fighters. You know, a lot of times women in MMA kind of gets pushed to the side or kind of gets poo pooed on or whatever. But I mean, we're fighters too, and I would love to see that division open up because I think I would thrive in it. That's my home base is straw weight. So. I know this one's random, but I'm gonna throw it out. I think it's relative to you. Just fought a former world uh, boxing champion. I just spoke to Bob Arum, arguably the greatest promoter in boxing of our lifetime, and uh, he said he would like to match up his own fighter, Terence Crawford, against Conor McGregor, um, but actually make him have the MMA fight first against McGregor. What would you make of such fight happening? Well, I'm going to say I'm probably not qualified to answer that. <laughs> like, in all honesty, I am probably the worst for watching fights and knowing fights. If coach gives me homework to watch a fighter, I'll watch that. Um, I hope that doesn't lose me any fan points. Mm -hmm. But um, I just, um, I'll study what I need to study. And then after that, I like to watch my teammates. And then other than that, I'm in the gym. So I'd rather have my time on the mat. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.